So yesterday some technical issues. We have stopped that uh, current electricity LAQ in the middle, right? So again, I'll take that in from today from the beginning again. So we'll go through that. So that is from current electricity is chapter one of the important LAQ question. That is state Kirchhoff laws of electrical network and apply these laws to obtain balancing condition for Wheatstone bridge. So first I will explain that what are the Kirchhoff laws for electrical network we have? Then we will apply these laws to get the balancing condition for Wheatstone bridge. Clear? So let us we go with the Kirchhoff laws. Okay. So just they were asking about statement of the laws only. So just what they are asking in the question that only we need to express in our sheet. Okay, so that means state Kirchhoff loss of electrical network. So first we'll see what is Kirchhoff loss. We have two loss of Kirchhoffs. One is first law I'm saying here. First law. Or this is also called junction law. Junction law. What is junction law? You know that junction is a uh, it meeting of two or more ways, two or more paths. Some of the path is coming and some of the path is going out. So first law related to electrical network, it related to current, it related to voltage. So the first law especially related to the current. At the junction, the sum of the current coming into the junction will be equal to some of the current flowing out of the junction. How much current will flow towards the junction? That much of current only will flow away from the junction. But maybe the incoming current may be two ways. The outgoing current may be one way or three ways or it may be two ways. Depends upon that. But so how much current is you are getting towards the junction that much of current will flow away from the junction jitna aa rahe towards junction ke pass utna hi junction ke baad jayega so that means so if i take one simple diagram if you take so this is one junction i am taking there is a current is coming i1 current is coming here and there is a current is going coming again i2 current i1 i2 both the currents are coming towards the junction at o and I'm taking there are other currents, which are three currents flowing away from the junction. That is I3, I4, I5. As from the diagram, we have totally five currents are there in which two of them is moving towards the junction. That is O. Three of them is moving away from the junction, from the O. That means as per the definition of the junction law, what does that mean? Sum of current flowing into junction is equal to sum of currents flowing out of junction. Clear? Sum of the current flowing into the into junction is equal to the sum of current flowing away or out of junction. So as from this definition or statement of the law, from this diagram one we can write I1, I2 is flowing towards the junction. Yes or no? Yes. And I3, I4, I5 is moving away from the junction. Observe the arrow mark. This arrow mark is towards the O is there. But these arrow marks are away from the O. So this means I can write from this statement 
sum of the current flowing toward junction that is i1 plus i2 is equal to sum of the current flowing away from the junction that is i1 i3 plus i4 plus i5 so both of this i1 i2 will together how much current is there then i3 i4 i5 together will be same amount of current that means no current will be stay at o no current will stay at the junction so jitna aa raha hai utna hi jayega clear so this is first law or junction law now coming to the second law what is second law we'll see second law or this is also called voltage or loop law also called voltage or loop law what is voltage or loop law means in any electrical network in any electrical network if you consider one closed path loop means closed path so in any net and electrical network or in any closed path if you see in any closed path the sum of or the algebraic sum of potential difference potential difference algebraic in any closed path the algebraic sum of potential difference is equal to zero is equal to zero that is simply we can say sigma v v means potential difference is zero in any closed path in any closed path so in any closed path sum of potential difference or algebraic sum of potential difference zero means so definitely some potential should be minus that means some potential difference should be minus and some potential difference should be plus then only that will be cancel out and finally we'll get a zero then how do we consider which one is positive potential difference which one is negative potential difference means when we are moving when we are moving in loop from higher potential to lower potential then pd is negative pd mean potential difference pd mean potential difference when we are moving in loop from high potential point to low potential point higher potential to lower potential then potential difference is negative similarly when we are moving in loop from low potential to high potential then potential difference will be positive simple we can say if it is going towards a higher potential it is positive towards a lower potential it is negative that's it so high to low negative low to high positive but potential difference means as from ohms law across the conductor or across the resistor when current is flowing through a resistor the potential difference is i into r i into r and we know that current flows from high potential region to low potential region or high potential point to low potential point so when current is flowing through resistor so we need to mark what is higher potential point what is lower potential point and in resistor we need to mark the high and low potential point as by seeing the direction of current and current flows from high to low point and in a in loop we have getting some cell cell or battery 
so battery or cell is emf so you know that battery symbol is one short time one long line will be present short line represent negative potential long line represent positive potential obviously we can say long line is plus and short line is minus or high potential or low potential for example one example i'll say from here one simple circuit i'm taking one cell which has emf e and there is one resistor is there here this is called r1 and this is another resistor is there which is called r2 here and as usually there is no current is flowing i from this direction like this current is flowing finally it is coming then i am taking there is a loop loop i am taking i am marking as a b c d i am taking a loop as a b c d a loop means where you start and you going in a network and come back to the same point starting point and ending point should be same then only it's called closed loop loop means closed path so close one a b c d a that means like this a b c d a okay so our loop is a b c d a correct start with a and move towards b c d and come back to a now while you are moving if any potentials are you are going from high to low means negative low to high means positive for that what we will do first we will mark the high potential and low potential regions so that easily we can write the equation what is that you see first we started with a a and current is flowing like this a to b current is flowing and we know current flows from high to low potential that means this plus and this is minus again current in r2 resistor also b to c is flowing that is this is plus this is minus and c to d we don't have any resistor or battery and d to a there is a battery is there obviously you know battery is the negative terminal this one positive terminal is this one so once you mark the across resistor and across battery plus minus plus minus there won't be any confusion while writing the equation there won't be any confusion while writing the equation so simply we can write by using this when we are moving in a loop from high to low potential negative low to high potential positive directly some of them we have to write so now we will write that sum of the potential difference equal to zero, right? We will write first A to B. Current I is flowing through a resistor R1. So potential difference current into resistance, obviously. But when we are moving from A to B, we are moving from plus to minus. That is I to low. So I to low means negative. So here we have to write minus I into R1. First one. Second, B to C. B to C. So B to C, that is plus to minus. Again, plus to minus. Again, it is minus. So that is again I minus I into R2. Next, C to D don't have anything. And D to A, you see, we are going from negative to positive. That is lower to higher. So whether it is positive or negative, lower to higher means positive. So that is plus e this is equal to zero so like this we need to write a loop law and in this way we need to write a junction law clear now so this is junction law and loop law that is first part of this question state kitsch of loss of electrical network and apply these laws to obtain balancing condition that is second part now we will going to discuss is it clear? Yeah. So just now we discussed the first part of the question. The second part that is apply these laws to obtain the balancing condition of Wheatstone Bridge, right? So let us, what is called Wheatstone Bridge? A Wheatstone bridge is simple. It is a combination of Wheatstone bridge. It is a just 
combination of five resistors a group of five resistors in which four resistors are connected as four side of the square four side of the square or four arms of the square and the fifth resistor we connected and along the diagonal along the diagonal of the square okay and about other diagonal between other diagonal point we connect a battery that means a wheatstone bridge is a combination of five resistor along with one battery along with one battery and that is look like a square shape one diagonal between one diagonal we connect a fifth resistor and another diagonal between that emf that is battery will connect so let us we see what is that exact diagram look here so these are four side of the square let us consider and i'm connecting four resistor in four sides and we named as it is p it is q and it is r and it is s p q r s which are going to be connected between there is a point i am taking it as a this is something like b this is something like c this is something like d so these p q r s are connected respectively between ac cb db and ad in abcd points we have in between that p q r s are connected p q r s are connected four resistors are connected as four arms of the square now the fifth resistor which we are going to be connect between the c and d diagonal that is called galvanometer resistor we call g and between a and b terminal we are going to be connect one battery so battery we are going to be connect here so this battery has emf e and this is the terminal called a and this is a terminal called b okay now what which two last just now we discuss that is which of first line second law will apply for this one and get the balancing condition for wheatstone bridge so what is called balance or when we can say bridge is balanced bridge is balanced means we can say bridge is said to be balanced that only possible when the potential difference across the galvanometer resistor the potential difference across galvanometer resistor should be zero should be zero that means there is no current is passing through this galvanometer resistor that means from the g or through the g there is no current is passing because the potential difference across that is zero potential difference zero means what jitna potential c pe rahega utna hi potential d pe rahega that is potentials are same there is no current will flow so whenever there is no current is flowing through galvanometer or the potential difference across the galvanometer is zero then we can say at that time or at that moment we can say the wheatstone bridge is balanced wheatstone bridge is balanced so at that time what is the condition will get we'll see now first of all for this circuit diagram we'll apply the kirchhoff two laws what are those two laws we'll see now first there is a current it is coming from positive terminal of the battery as i current is coming towards the junction a current i is coming towards the junction a so obviously there is a current will be divided here because junction a is there towards the junction a i is coming and away from the junction two currents are flowing i can write it as i1 and there is a call i2 then i will try to write the junction loss at the junction at junction a junction law i'm applying so current flowing towards the junction is equal to away from the junction that means as for the diagram i can write i is equal to i1 plus i2 equation 1 we consider 
Then similarly, this current is flowing towards the junction C, another junction C we have. And at this junction C, I1 current is coming and here I'm taking there is a I3 current is flowing away from the junction or through Q. And there is a current is flowing away from the junction. I'm taking it as IG, galvanometer current. So that means at the junction C, I can write I1 is coming towards the junction and flowing away it is IG plus I3 equation 2 I'm consider. And coming to again junction at D, junction D you see, I2 current is coming towards the junction, IG current also coming towards the junction and these two are combined to form and one more current called I4. I4. So I consider that I2 is coming towards D, IG also coming towards the D and it is moving away from the junction is D to B that is I4 current. So same for if I apply the junction law at D junction also. So we can write it as I2 plus IG that is equal to I4. This is equation 3. Okay. Now finally, there is I4 current is coming towards the B junction here. There is I3 current also coming towards the junction B. But from the battery of the positive terminal of the battery, the current is out is I. So towards the negative terminal of the battery should also come I only. So that means here I current is coming out. So that across the circuit it flows and remaining current I should come. That means here also I it comes out. That means I can write here at the junction B I3 plus I4 is equal to I that is equation 4. So four junctions we have applied four junction laws. So we got it as four equations. Clear now? Now similarly we will apply the second law that is called loop law. So here we consider two loops. Here we consider two loops. So I'm considering one loop as A C D A A C D A two loops. So one loop here. Second loop is C B D C C B D C one loop A C D A another loop. So two loop two junction law will apply and we'll see what is the condition. Okay. So one loop I'm taking like this another loop also like this. So loop one loop two. Then from loop law, loop law, from loop law, for loop you see A, C, D, A, A, C, D, A, A, C, D, A. So first of all, what we have to do, we have to mark plus minus plus minus marking. Then only we come to know whether plus or minus potential difference. So here we'll mark from A to C current is flowing from A to C so that there is a plus terminal and this is a minus terminal. And again current flows from C to D so it should be a plus terminal and it should be a minus terminal. And current flows from A to D but we are moving from D to A because in loop. So this should be a plus and this should be a minus. Now apply this loop. So start with A and move towards C and again towards D, again towards A like this you have to move. So first A to C you see, A to C we are going from plus to minus that is higher to lower which is negative. So that is I1 into P minus I1 into P. Second from C to D is also going from plus to minus only that is higher to lower only again potential difference negative that is I in, IG into G. That is IG into G. And from D to A, D to A we are going from negative to positive. Negative to positive means lower to higher which is positive potential. So positive potential that is plus I2 into R that is equal to 0. This is consider equation 5. So because sum of potential difference is 0 in loop law. 
So the answer is the sum of this will be zero. Got it? Kuch nahi. Easily we need to apply loop la and we'll get an equation for next loop of for a loop. Second loop I'm taking this C B D C C B D C C B D C. Again, we'll make plus minus marking in this loop also. C to B we are coming. So along the current only coming, this is plus, this is minus. And B to D we are coming, but opposite to direction of current we are coming. So it should be minus, this should be plus. Current flows from higher to lower. Again, D to C, again, it is moving. Already mark is there, negative, positive. Then apply loop lie here from C to B first. So we are getting from higher to lower. We are going from higher to lower. It is negative. That is minus I three Q and B to D. We are going from negative to positive. That is lower to higher. That is plus I four S and D to C. D to C also we are going from negative to positive, lower to higher. It is also plus plus I G G equal to zero. This is equation number six. Equation number six. Clear. See these four junction laws based on the junction law. At this junction, at this junction, at this junction, at this junction, we applied and we wrote the four laws. Equation we got four. Now we have imagined two loops. One is A C D A, other one is C B D A. Two loops. We applied two loop law. We got two more equations. Now just now I told that bridge is balance. Bridge is balance means potential difference across galvanometer should be zero, or current flowing through galvanometer should be zero. Correct. So that means if can. Yeah. So for to balance the Wheatstone bridge, the potential difference across galvanometer is zero or current through it is zero. That means IG should be zero. So IG zero means in our equation five, also IG is there. In equation six, also IG is there. In equation two and three, also IG is there. Then from all these two, three and five, six, four equation IG is involved. So wherever IG is involved, there I will put zero. Then rewrite the remaining equation. See, look here. Put IG equal to zero. Put IG equal to zero in equations two, three, five, six. The four equations में IG is equal to zero रखना. देखो, IG is equal to zero रखते में क्या आते देखो जल्दी से देखो. यहाँ पे आई जी जीरो रखेंगे सो आई वन इज इक्वल टू आई थ्री आ जाएंगे और ये आई थ्री थ्री इक्वेशन में भी आई जी इक्वल टू जीरो रखेंगे तो आई टू इज इक्वल टू आई फोर आ जाएगा सो so, मतलब आई वन इज इक्वल टू आई थ्री आ रहा है और आई टू इज इक्वल टू आई फोर आ रहा है करेक्ट इक्वेशन नंबर सेवन ले लो चाहे नेक्स्ट अगेन फ्रॉम फाइव एंड सिक्स में रखना है फाइव एंड सिक्स में भी रखे तो यहाँ पे आई जी जीरो रखे तो ये पूरा के पूरा जीरो हो जाएगा और यहाँ पे आई जी जीरो रखे तो ये भी जीरो हो जाएगा तो उसमें से देखो माइनस आई वन पी प्लस आई टू आर इक्वल टू जीरो इसको मैं सिंप्लीफाई से निकला है तो 
आई वन पी इज इक्वल टू आई टू आर हो जाएगा ये माइनस इधर आए तो प्लस आ जाएगा सो आई वन पी इज इक्वल टू आई टू आर इट इज इक्वेशन नंबर एट ले लो क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम इक्वेशन सिक्स से आई जी जीरो रखे तो यहाँ पे आई थ्री क्यू प्लस आई फोर एस विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो दैट मीन्स आई थ्री क्यू प्लस आई फोर एस इक्वल टू जीरो और इम्प्लाइज फ्रॉम दिस आई कैन राइट आई थ्री क्यू इज इक्वल टू आई फोर एस क्लियर ना दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर नाइन ले लो चाहे बट फ्रॉम द इक्वेशन फोर सेवन वेर एवर आई टू इज देर आई कैन राइट आई फोर और अदरवाइज वॉट यू डू डिवाइड इक्वेशन एट बाई नाइन इक्वेशन एट बाई नाइन यू डू वॉट विल गेट आई वन पी बाई आई थ्री क्यू इज इक्वल टू आई टू आर एंड आई फोर एस बट फ्रॉम इक्वेशन सेवन वेर एवर आई टू इज देर आई कैन राइट आई फोर वेर एवर आई थ्री आई वन इज देर आई कैन राइट आई थ्री सो रिप्लेस सो फ्रॉम सेवन आई कैन राइट आई थ्री पी बाय आई थ्री क्यू दट इज आई फोर आर बाय आई फोर एस आई फोर आई फोर आई थ्री आई थ्री कैंसल डाउट now we have left with the final condition that is p by q is equal to r by s this is the balancing condition what is it balancing condition samajh mein aaya ye स्टोन ब्रिज जो बैलेंसिंग कंडीशन है पी बाई क्यू इज इक्वल टू आर बाई एस थोड़ा सा लेंथी है बट स्टेप बाय स्टेप करे तो आसान लगेगा क्लियर तो दिस इज वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एल ए क्यू फ्रॉम करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी चैप्टर क्लियर so only 5 minutes time is left is there so let us we'll do uh, continue tomorrow only uh, tomorrow with nuclear reactor i will explain the laq nuclear reactor so by tomorrow so obviously all the laqs will be going to be cover by tomorrow that means saturday so all the laqs will be going to be cover so whatever the laqs i explain from the waves i explain three and from current electricity this and tomorrow i will explain nuclear reactor this five question if you perfect definitely you can able to attempt the two questions clear so tomorrow we'll continue that uh, remaining if you start also it will stop by middle only so better we'll start tomorrow that clear